Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rick Heidens. I'm a software engineer in the data science team at JW Player. Um, you all probably know JW Player from our video player, but we also have our platform, um, and we work on a couple of data products there. Um, today, I'm going to talk about uh, using artificial intelligence, or machine learning, as it's often called, in order to find scenes in video. So let's first talk about what a scene actually is. Um, some people attach different meanings to the word scene. Um, some people like to call a shot a scene. Um, in our case, we're trying to find uh, clusters of shots in a video that um, represent scenes. Um, so we're trying to find the story units. Um, as I said, the, the task of scene detection is finding logical story units in video. Now, why do we want to do this? Um, two primary, the, we have two pri primary reasons to do this. Um, one is automatic content indexing of large video libraries. And the second one is automatic advertisement in section, in insertion. Especially automatic advertisement insertion is really important for us. Um, we often see that uh, publishers prefer to use pre-rolls in, in front of their video content. But the problem with a pre-roll is that um, if a user watches, attempts to watch a video and they get served a pre-roll immediately, they're likely to drop off. Um, in order to solve that, um, publishers uh, can use mid-roll advertisements. Mid-roll advertisements are m advertisements served in the middle of a video, but um, placing them is hard. Like, where do you place them in the video? Um, um, it, it requires human effort, and um, we try to solve that problem. So um, by finding the scenes in the video, we try to be smart about placing advertisements in the video. So let's look at our architecture. So um, the first thing we do is we split up the video into shots. Um, that's the, the basic uh, object that we work with. Um, then for every shot, we extract multiple features. And we then feed those features into a, in a neural network. Um, this, so we feed, we encode features as uh, vectors. We put it into a neural network, and we get, a, get an output vector that is a representation of that shot. Um, we then build a similarity matrix. Um, so for every shot, we run it through the neural network. We build this similarity matrix, and then we can start looking um, where are the clusters of similar shots and group them together, and then place the final scene boundaries. So in order to do this, we extract multiple features. Um, we want to take into account visual, uh, visual features. We want to take into account the audio of a, of a shot. Um, audio is often very meaningful in, um, it's often a very meaningful cue. Uh, you can, oft if you watch a video, you can often tell by the soundtrack that something is changing, something is happening. So we want to enable our neural network to leverage this feature. Um, we also take into account transcripts and time. Um, transcripts are not always available, so if they're not available, we can create them using existing uh, speech-to-text services, and um, we also take into account time, since we want to be able to let our network distinguish between shots at different points into the video. So how do you extract visual features? Um, we extract visual features by um, extracting frames from the video and then encoding them using Google's Inception neural network. Um, this is a schematic view of uh, Inception. Um, basically, what goes into it is, a, uh, is the raw image data. And um, what we do is we capture the output of this layer in the neural network. Um, it's a 2048-dimensional descriptor that contains all the important information in this image. Um, um, the reason, um, so essentially what this network does by default is classify images. Um, and it does that by, um, by making a differentiation between a thousand different classes. It's, it's trained on ImageNet. 
um, which is a data set of a million images with uh, a thousand different classes. And this, what that means is that this vector, this, this bottleneck vector as we call it, contains all the information that the classifier needs to in order to distinguish between different objects. And um, that is also really useful for other tasks. Um, so besides extracting uh, visual features, we also want to take into account the audio of a shot. So um, we do this by encoding audio as an image. Um, now, how do you do that? Um, in order to do that, we extract, we sample audio from shots. We then uh, convert it into a male spectrogram. A male spectrogram is a, uh, on one axis has the frequency, frequency bins, and on the other axis time. It, it indicates the intensity of sound in, uh, uh, of, of certain frequencies in sound. Um, it's it's mel scale that uh, the mel scale is a scale that's based on the human auditory system, um, because um, lower frequencies are way more obvious and way more important for hearing than higher frequencies. Um, especially users at an older or uh, fewer at an older age can can not distinguish between many high frequencies. So. Um, th that's why we use this uh, log logarithmic scale. Um, besides audible features, we also want to take into account textual features. Um, many information is, is can be found. Can we we can extract a lot of information from the transcript from the video. Um, we do this by utilizing uh, the Google News Word to Fact Corpus. Um, so what we do is for every shot we we sample uh, the the text. Um, we then look up the the word embedding for every shot, which is a 300-dimensional word vector in a, in, a, in a continuous vector space that rep represents that word. Um, the interesting thing about word to fact is that um, words that have a semantic relationship to each other in natural language are positioned close to each other in that vector space. Um, for example, you, you can draw analog analogies like king and queen, um, which will be um, will be closing each other in this vector space. Um, the interesting thing about word to fact is that it's essentially an unsupervised uh, way of, of creating these embeddings. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail about that since that's a whole research topic o on its own. Um, but um, the, the key thing to, to know about this is that we can use this information to find scenes. So we now have a visual representation of a shot, a audible representation of a shot, and a textual representation of a shot. These are all factors. We then concatenate these factors into a single feature factor. Um, the single feature factor is a, uh, as we call it, uh, represents all the features that we can extract from a shot. Um, we then feed this into a neural network that we train uh, to differentiate between shots. So we have a training data set, which is BBC's Planet Earth. Um, we know where all the shots are, and we also know which shots um, are similar to each other, and in our case, which shots are in the same scene. So we try to train this neural network to um, create, produce embeddings for shots, where similar shots, shots that are in the same scene, are close to each other in this vector space, and where dissimilar shots are further away. Um, this, on its own, is really powerful, and um, it allows us to encode um, these highly dimensional feature factors into low dimensional descript descriptors that describe the entire shot. Um, so now we 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 encode all the shots in a video. How do you then play, find the scene breaks? Um, in order to do that, we uh, came up with a clustering strategy. So what, what you see here are um, all the shots in the first episode of Planet Earth. I extracted features from them. I uh, ran all the shots through a multimodal deep neural network. And I then um, calculated the cosine similarity between all the different shots in the video. Um, 
Now, what you can clearly see is that um, along the diagonal, so along this axis, you see these red squares. Um, that means that all these shots are really similar to each other. Um, it is also really obvious that um, there are sections that are less similar. Um, for example, here you can see a really, in, uh, you can see a cluster of really similar shots. Um, so the next step is to actually place the scene boundaries. Um, we do this by looking at the similarity scores along this diagonal for, the, for adjacent shots. So for shot zero and shot one in the video, we know how similar they are, and we do that for all the shots. Um, if you then plot that, you, you get a plot like this. So you can see that um, this is actually not doesn't start with zero, but you can see that here a shot has, is fairly similar to each other, here shots are really similar to each other, and then we place scene breaks at the local minima between the similarity scores. Um, you can clearly see that um, here is a really steep drop, so there must be something going on there. The story is changing, um, and then for that reason we place a scene break there. Um, we also assign a confidence score to every scene break. So um, based on the, on, the, on the steepness of, of this plot, we assign a, a confidence score. So for example, you can see that here there's a really steep drop, and here too. But here the drop is not so steep. This means that um, we are really confident that there is a, um, that there is a scene break here, but not as much not as confident here, since th this is all pretty similar. Um, so we can basically tune our algorithm to, uh, to, to, uh, to only find the really obvious scenes or to also take into account these less obvious scenes. Um, this is especially useful for ad insertion, since it allows you, uh, gives you more points to insert ads or less points based on um, how confident the model is that there is a scene break. So if you then plot this similar, these similarity scores back on our original similarity matrix, you get something like this. Um, you can see our model is really confident about a scene break here, um, which I think is right, since uh, you can clearly see here is a cluster of scenes that are less similar. Um, and it's also really confident here. But it it's might be a little bit hard to see. It's less confident here. Um, in, in this red cluster of similar shots, there are actually shots that are less similar to each other. So we try to, to be smart about that, and we assign them a lower confidence score. Um, actually, so that, that's basically how our scene detection algorithm works at a high level. Um, I will now take questions. Mm -hmm.